Hi, everyone. Dan Goodstein here with Erpa AI. Welcome to the executive interview series. I'm joined here by Gareth Hall. He's the Director of Strategic Alliances for Robotics and AI at NICE. Gareth, good to see you again. Good to see you too, Dan. So it's been a while since we spoke. Uh, I was just looking it up. I think it's been almost a year. Uh, it seems hard to believe. Um, so yeah, maybe before we jump in uh, to, to some specifics around what you're doing, maybe give us a sense as to your sense of what's what's new in attended automation over the maybe the last year or so. Yeah, of course. I think uh, yeah, quite a lot's happened over the last year or so. I think I think the conversations and, and the projects we're having with organizations about attended automation have, have broadened quite significantly, I think, since we last spoke, which is a very good thing. Automation versus augmentation. I think that discussion is, is largely done and augmentation is winning, I think. So I think now the conversation is a, very much about how can we help agents in the contact center to have better conversations? Uh, how can we ensure compliance in complex sales and servicing situations? Uh, how can we coach agents and employees in real time around their soft skills? So um, let, let me give you an example. Um, I'm working at the moment with a, a large retail bank in the UK, and they really want uh, real time agent coaching. But what does that mean? Well, they want to focus on soft skills as well as making the work of agents easier. And they want their agents to really be able to take ownership of, of a customer problem whilst they're on the phone or on a web chat. They want them to ask the right questions, to get the right outcomes, to mm. set the right expectations, build rapport, empathize with the customer, all of these things. And we're working with them using a capability that can listen to customer conversations in real time. And by that, I mean both voice and web chat, you know, so digital and, and you know, conversation, real conversations. And we're using our virtual attendants, so Neva, to guide those agents. And taking ownership is, is a really good example. So you can use a virtual attendant like Neva to sort of guide the agent to, you know, to almost sort of stop and recap when a conversation isn't going so well. Script the call with the right phrases to bring that call back on track. Maybe focus on the, the two or three issues that the customer has and help the agents to fix those in a really clear and concise way. And you can't really sort of do that with your, you know, a traditional, you know, attended robot passing things, you know, off to an unattended robot. You, you almost need this sort of co-pilot listening into the conversation with you. And so that's that's part of it. But the same bank has, has also been working with us around our task mining capabilities. And that's also where a lot of the conversations have been moving over the last year or so. And there's a, a lot of discussion around different different phrases, but, you know, task mining, process analytics, obviously machine yeah. learning, AI, all those sort of buzzwords. But what most organizations seem to want and can now get is to understand what's happening in their business down to that really most detailed level. And in, in my view, it's, it's the task mining that's probably the biggest growing trend in attended robotics. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it is. And, uh, you know, I know people that I speak to seem to use task mining and process mining interchangeably or, or get, get confused uh, between the two. Uh, so, so for those that um, don't know the differentiation, uh, you know, how would you explain it? And, and, and how does it differ from some of the the traditional business analysis. Why can't we just do it the old way, Garrett? <laughs> so, so some people do, but I, I think we can do better. So look, I think task mining aims to analyze actions that employees, contact center agents, and other colleagues take in the systems and tools on their desktop in order to complete their work. And there are various reasons why you might want to do this, but they all stem from uncovering insights into the tasks and activities being undertaken and making that insight actionable. That's the key word, making it actionable. So the operational processes can be optimized and you know, your customer and colleague experiences can be vastly improved. Now, there are different types of, of task mining. They're, they're not all the same thing. So for example, the, the technology stack, which NICE has developed is, is kind of different from other options in that it actually generates its own data in real time based on the actions that are happening on the desktop. And that's, that's brand new data generated it didn't exist before someone clicked on the button or, or typed into a, a field now this this really means that you know when you're when you're working you can get down to that really really detailed level we're, we're not mining application logs or historical information when someone performs an action the data is generated then and there and that, that's been really fascinating for, for that retail bank that i mentioned before so we generated over a million actions in a couple of weeks based on a small number of agents just doing their work and then we use um, machine learning to sort of automatically uncover operational insights. 
Uh, you know, we've, as you know, we've been working in contact centers for over 35 years. We've, we've got a, you know, pretty good at uncovering patterns of work, but now we're sort of using machine learning to take that to the next level. So for that bank, they are able to see how different agents use different systems and correlated to that to handle time and the outcomes of those customer conversations. So they're able to sort of illuminate the entire flow that their colleagues use to complete a task. And that includes note-taking, using spreadsheets, accessing the intranet, websites. So any action or activity on the desktop capture, regardless of whether there are log files or you know, sort of historical information or not. And anyone that spent time in a, a contact center, as you know, knows that there's a lot of time spent outside the core systems to achieve a business outcome. You know, so, so this is it's an all encompassing approach that, that's vital to get that sort of 360 degree view of all those desktop actions. Now, that bank that I mentioned, so one of the, the teams of agents we use task mining uh, for were actually answering customer web chats. So you'd think they'd be spending most of their time, in fact, almost all of their time in the web chat application. Right, you know, maybe right. it's a REM system. Yeah, maybe, maybe you know, some, some other data source or whatever it happens to be. Well, they, they easily use 25 different applications and tools each, right? And there was a lot of use of Notepad to temporarily gather information. Uh, they're using Word for spell checking before replying to the customer. There are <clears throat> spreadsheets for, for pre-cam responses, external websites to locate branches, um, the intranet to, to understand business processes, et cetera, et cetera. So in that real world situation, they were only spending about 50% of their time in the web chat application. So 50% of the time actually sort of almost having that customer conversation, the rest was elsewhere. And, and that bank is no different in that respect to, to many of the larger organizations you find in, well, banking, insurance, telco, media, other industries. I think these are the, the common challenges and, and being able to quantify and understand those actions down to the lowest level enables them to provide the, the right support to their agents using, you know, a virtual assistant in this case. So we started talking about, about using Neva, but if we can make, you know, more about the customer conversation and less about the, the other 50% of playing around with tools trying to get answers, then I think we're, uh, we're moving to a much more positive way. So I think task mining is about, very much about that, you know, detail, what are they doing? Process mining tends to be this more sort of, you know, top down sort of level about, you know, the, the pretty picture of the process yeah. kind of thing. They both, both have a place. There's, no, there's nothing worse, and I, I imagine it's because of what you're talking about. There's, there's nothing worse than chatting with a customer service rep uh, and waiting for 10 minutes for an answer, and then if you don't respond within 45 seconds, they they shut down the chat. Right? We've all we've all had that terrible experience. Are you still with me? Uh, yeah, it's been 30 seconds. But um, no, interesting. And and so what? So what in your view, Gareth? You know, what, if, for an organization who's says, yeah, that makes sense, right? Um, what, what are sort of the prerequisites? What, what, what's needed to make task mining really successful? Sure, so I, th I think a few things, you know, so, so based on, on doing this in the real world, you know, I think for task mining to be successful, first of all, you need a lot of data, right? So if you limit the data gathering to just a few people over a few, few days, it's not sufficient, right? And that this really isn't about recording one person doing a process and then automating, right? So it's not about that at all. It's about understanding an entire organization, department or a team and how they function down to that most detailed level. And that's really about people, process and technology, right? So the wider you roll this out, the better the insights. I mean, we can do a, a decent pilot as we did, you know, with sort of 20 people over two weeks of working and that, that's fine. But we've also seen that leaving task finding always on yields the best results as, as no business is static. You know, every business is dynamic. Insights are going to change over time. Now, that's, that's one aspect of the data. The, the other aspect, I guess, is there's a lot of focus on data security, much more than there was even a couple of years ago. So, you know, PII, personally identifiable information, it's, it's, it's discussed a lot. And task mining can actually get a lot of value out of understanding the data moving around those systems and that organization. And that can be implemented completely securely, you know, without introducing any additional risk. However, a lot of organizations take the initial stance that everything should be hashed. You know, the application involved should be limited. And this requires some careful conversations so that the value of, of mining that data is understood and their infosec teams are, are comfortable with, with that capability. So, you know, that data is important. I guess that's the first thing. The second thing is really, you need to be able to show all the different variants, all the different ways in which a task is performed. Because once again, going back to the contact center example, in the real world, you'll see a, a process or a task done in you know, dozens, if not hundreds of different ways, even if the business outcome is, is the same, right? And so 
you know, dozens and dozens of variants of the process, same business outcome. It's, it's important to really, uh, you know, mine all of those different aspects because, you know, often processes evolve to overcome limitations, but they tend to stay like that even when the limitation is removed. So sometimes the way that people do things perhaps aren't the best way of doing things. So being able to understand all of that is, is important to the variance piece. Thirdly, I believe that, you know, being across everything and able to generate your own data is important. So focusing down on one process, giving detailed insights for that one instance, you know, can be useful. But being able to simply generate data based on all the activities can uncover insights that you, you can't capture in a manual way or, or with traditional process mining actually on its own. So, I mean, this, this kind of turns on its head 50 years of, of traditional business analysis, right? Where you focus on one process at a time, you work out where you think you've got a problem, you, you delve deeper and deeper in it until you come up with a solution. Whereas now, with the sort of task mining that we're, we're talking here, we can actually tell you where you should focus by looking at everything, effectively, not, not at one process. So you're, you're, not, you're not biased by your preconceptions of what's happening in the business. And actually, I mean, one, one, one example of the sort of insight you can get, I mean, this is going back a little while, um, and it's sort of a byproduct. We, we started to do some, some task mining in, in a particular area and we just let it run on absolutely everything. They're very comfortable with that. And it was actually even on the team leader's desktop of, of this set of agents. And actually at the end of that um, week that we did it, we did it for just a week, um, we were actually able to tell based on his Google searches and what he was looking for, what sort of car he was about to buy, what the make and model was and what the color was. Right. That, just simply because that was data that he was, he was putting in during his lunch hour as he started to look at things. I mean, as I say, not suggesting that, you know, the sort of big brother approach is the way before, but the sort of insight you can get by looking across everything when you look at processes can, can be quite amazing. And I think finally, to be successful, you, you've got to make this actionable, right? So, you know, the value is, is generated by taking action, by doing something. So, for example, the ability to generate design documents based on what you found at a click of a button or, or even a, an end-to-end -end automation, that leads to a much faster realization of the business benefits. And I think Task mining tools that sort of can address all of those, those areas and capabilities that are particularly powerful because you can leave them always on. You know, as I said before, that, that snapshot of a couple of weeks is, is great. But if you can have it on an ongoing basis and then make those insights actionable, then I think you're you really got something. Like that. So uh, and what about Garrett in the, in the, in the current environment? I mean, it, it seems like most, if not a lot of companies are, you know, in, in a hybrid working environment, maybe not going back, right? So um, is this still possible? How, how does the, the, the office time versus the home time affect the, the task mining and, and how you guys are doing it? Yeah, it's, it's a really good point, actually. I think, you know, the hybrid home office models are, are very much the norm now. So you've got, you know, employees, managers and, and business leaders sort of adjusting to the new way of working and they're, they're, still, they're still adjusting. I think agents and customer service employees in particular now have to perform a, a much sort of wider range of tasks. You know, they're adapting quickly to changing business processes. They still need to maintain service consistency in, in now, you know, difficult circumstances sometimes. They've got to keep compliant with those changing business rules. You know, they need to stay productive without, you know, necessarily having their, their experienced colleague or team leader, you know, next to them. And they've got to sort of deal with perhaps slightly more erratic work, variable call volumes, different channels. And I think what, what this means is that our clients and the organizations we're talking to are, are starting to leverage task mining and process analytics to really understand and explore remote workforce management and engagement. So not focusing just on the processes initially, but the people and how to support them better in that hybrid model. I think, you know, it generates an even greater need for ongoing continual task mining and process analytics across the whole workforce, right, where the gap. Yeah, best practices can be identified by discovering, for example, how, how are the top performing colleagues accomplishing their work? What are they doing? You know, how are they using those desktop tools to, to achieve it? You know, what support do the, the lower performers need, you know, in order to meet their, their KPIs, their key performance indicators? And I think thanks to the, you know, sort of actionable data-driven insights you can get from this, managers can have proper insight-driven discussions with their team members now. You know, they can support their individual development you know, and, and hopefully stem, you know, attrition as well. So I think by leveraging the likes of, you know, the, the desktop assistance capabilities of something like Neva, it's even possible for, for colleagues to have their own helper to sort of guide them, you know, even though they don't have their colleagues directly there, they've got helpers to guide them. And now with the task mining, you can work out where those gaps are that they need the help in particular. And that's really 
uh, assist with things like real-time compliance, which is one of the, the concerns of businesses in a hybrid uh, way of working. You know, and we can happily automate you know, the mundane tasks on their desktop as well to make their life a little bit less stressful. Uh, I think it's a great point you bring up. I mean, we've been having a lot of uh, conversations these days about great resignation and how to retain people. You mentioned that Trisha, I mean, attrition was a challenge before the pandemic. Now it's, it's uh, you know, closer to crisis than challenge, I think. Uh, but, but having something that, you know, makes their job easier, helps coach them perhaps, uh, assists them with what they're doing, makes it a less stressful job. Um, I think all uh, maybe more relevant now than, than ever before, right? Um, so, so what's next, Gareth? Uh, you know, what, what's what's your uh, spidey sense tell you about the the future of, of task mining and and maybe uh, even a, a specific example? You know, the, the UK bank that you mentioned. Uh, you know, what's on the uh, what's on the agenda? Yeah. So, I mean, I I, I kind of mentioned the always on capability to, uh, before. You know, the actionable insights workforce support across the whole enterprise. So, I, I almost think of that as sort of enterprise mining. And I, I think we can take that to new levels. I mean, we, we've got some, some really clever people sitting in dark and as much clever than I am thinking about new ideas around capabilities. But it's interesting to talk to the organizations about what they need, you know, pushing the boundaries of, of what's possible. And I guess while, while the exact details of, of what we're going to come up with are sort of under wraps, I, I, I particularly like, you know, one area of exploration around the use of predictive analytics. So almost allowing users to simulate sort of what if scenarios to predict the potential you know, impact of outcomes and how they would change based on different actions being taken. So for example, you know, how would compliance be impacted if you know, a virtual assistant guided an agent through this particular process step? Or you know, how would the handle time be effective if we automated this, this thing over here? So it's, it's really a case of helping people to focus on the right kind of things. And I think we're getting much closer to that. I think also, you know, you could take this a step further with sort of live champion challenger models, you know, trial different approaches in, in the real world and actually now properly measure the business outcomes for each of those. So that, you know, the best approach could be rolled out quickly across a whole team or a whole department with a click of a button. You know, I think uh, I'll always suggest that, you know, um, doing anyway, you know, with, with attended robotics, you can really help to optimize things quickly. But now I think you can you can do it even faster. And I think what we all really want is that, you know, optimize my business button, right? That's, that's what we're all after. Um, but I think, you know, we're, we're not quite there yet. But I think, you know, we can always start to focus down on some specific use cases as well. So, for example, you know, automatically surfacing what specific tasks the, the agents and colleagues are doing when they put a customer call or a chat on hold, you know, or during wrap up time. And that's absolutely something that uh, the retail bank I mentioned is, is looking at you know, trying to, to reduce the, the effort outside of the conversation, try and make it frictionless. And I guess taking it a step further, you know, what if you could automatically link the customer satisfaction stores with the actions of the best performing agent, for example, you know, and then roll out those best practices across the team. It's that kind of thing that they're looking to do at the moment. And I think there's a lot more runway around uncovering those best practices and rolling them out. So I think that's, that's the direction that we're certainly going in. I mean, lots of different directions. Can't, can't predict them all, but I think suffice to say, uh, I think the future of task mining and, and process analytics is looking pretty bright. And I think that means the future of attended automation is, is pretty bright as well. And I think, you know, it'll help to shine a light in the darker corners of, of business operations everywhere. And I think, uh, you know, maybe we will get that optimize my business button in the, in the not too distant future. You never know. Sounds good. I'll hold you to that, Gareth. <laughs> Gareth Hall, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dan. Take care.